Pop Tech Choices coming out of Luxury Games Championship 8. Guys, make sure you show us some love on this video. Make sure you're subscribed for more. That way you guys don't miss out on these cool little tech updates. I've been through all of the top 16 deck lists. I've uh, pulled the ones that particularly tickled my fancy um, in their tech choices. And we're going to talk about the general impact on some of these particular choices on the format. So, like I said, don't miss out. Let's dig on into this, shall we? Number one on our list here is actually Dimension Shifter. So I actually saw this in a Zodiac deck that was playing Triple Mistake. And I was like, really? So actually, playing this in Zodiac is actually ingenious. All right? Being able to... Okay, first up, you guys know that this is just a macrocosmo for two turns, right? Like, you make this, uh, and then you just you can make your Super Zodiac monster, make the Zeus, punish your opponent... Um, against Dragon Link, you get a free win, all right? Like, you drop this on Dragon Link turn one, they go, and they, they, they literally, they scoop them up, all right? Uh, outside of turn one, this card's poo-poo. All right, I, I guess in some situation, you, you could pot of, no, you can't even, you can't pot of Avarice Recycle because, you know, you can't have any cards in your grave. So, this is strictly turn one for Zodiac, but... This is freaking cool. I really liked this idea a lot, um, especially, you know, I'm, I've seen this in Weather Painter. <laughs> uh, I, I've seen, just seeing this hand trap, seeing more play in general is a good thing for the metagame, all right? So, yes, Shifty Boy getting a little bit more love here. Outside of that, like I said, you get so many free wins with this card in today's metagame. Even against Infernoble Knight, like, they can't really hand loop you, all right? Uh, I guess against Virtual World, you cut off their Searcher and their level modification, so they have to make, like, a subpar board against you. In the Mirror for Zoo, it's okay. And I guess against Eldlich, I mean, yeah, against Eldlich, you do shut off their Spells and Traps going to the Graveyard for two turns, which is a bit punishing to them, because if you can establish a big, fat Zeus, you're going to have a bad time, but they're usually going to have Scarlet and the uh, Conquistador anyway for that. So you really shouldn't have anything too much to worry about outside of that. So that's a little bit interesting. So Shifty Boy, ladies and gentlemen. Now, the first place list and the third place list brought back a little old friend of mine. Frickin' Skill Drain. All right. So what happens when Skill Drain exists in the format? Well, when you have a deck... Okay, so first up... The entire archetype for Virtual World is just Gazelle, Gazelle, Gazelle. Every one of these things dumps. Every one of these gives you an additional benefit of comboing, all right? Nothing on the field really frickin' matters, all right? So 95% of the situations, you can just make a VFD, back it with a skill drain. Uh, you you can make anything backed with a skill drain in your deck, all right? Like, it's, it's actually... It's thinking about this and seeing this in actual application. I was like, hmm, we can actually resolve skill drain in our deck. It's the only trap that the first place was playing next to the, the broken gate trap. So you had four traps. That's it. All right. That's all, all it calls for. So when you have a, the ability to globally blank things that the opponent is setting up, don't have to worry about Zodiac doing crazy things to you. If you just skill drain them. I mean, I don't know what else to say about this. Skill drain is a freaking powerhouse, man. There's a reason why it's limited to one, all right? The OCG's got triple of this, and they've got Eldritch running around playing three of these. Imagine, imagine Eldritch. All right, think about this. 3,500 attack Eldritch Golden Lords running around with well, skill drains active. Oh, and the conks can still pop because they're normal monsters. Because it's a trap that's doing the effect to pop. What a frickin' time to be alive. Think about that, all right? So, yes, first and third place were both, well, third, fourth, were both playing skill drain in their decks. Very nice, uh, very nice choices, by the way. Next up is Gamma. <sighs> gamma, Gamma, Gamma. Gamma is once again the best hand trap that we have right now. Gamma gives you the ability to stop the true king of all calamities. Gives you the ability to directly stop anything virtual world your opponent's doing. You get to interact with any sort of the combo that your opponent is setting up on the field for Dragon Link. 
putting two bodies on the field. You also get the ability to interact with Zeus. All right, well, just just gonna double chain anyway. It doesn't matter. All right, you can stop a dry item pop. Um, let's see here. Um, yeah, that you guys see what I mean. You have this generic monster effect negate that gives you the ability to go. Nope, nope, nope. You deck thin one to put it on the field. If your opponent decides to kill it for some reason, bad players do that. They they like to attack the driver, and you're just like. Now my Gamma's online again. Why would you do that? All right. Stopping <laughs> the crazy things is what this is all about. All at the cost of one brick in your main deck. All right. Garnet would be proud of this. But there's nothing else too crazy to say about this right now. Gamma's play right now is through the roof. I, I've seen this card in so many decks at this point. It's just the generic hand trap of choice. All right. And, oh, and by the way, tuner plus non-tuner. If you're playing Halk, it also gives you a level 8 Synchro on the board. I know a lot of people have kind of given up on playing Omega at this point. At least some of the Virtual World players that I was looking at for their stuff were like, eh, Omega's fine. Um, I did notice that Luke and um, Gabrielle were not playing Omega, while Pac was actually playing the Omega. So... Once again, it's uh, up to you on how you want to explore that, but a gamma, ladies and gentlemen. Now the powerhouse of the weekend. There were two cards that took this event by storm. Hello, true king of all calamities. Ah, once per turn, detach a material from this card and declare one attribute. Now I would like to also take a moment here to uh, add a subnote here that divine is an attribute. Somebody told me the other day, that their judge wouldn't let them declare divine with this and i'm like what do you mean divine is in fact an attribute this turn all face up monsters on the field become that attribute and all monsters in your opponent's possession with that attribute cannot activate their effects or attack all right so uh what happens here when uh this is my win con some decks right now <clears throat> virtual world can make two of these, all right. I just, uh, I just want to throw that out there. You can put two of these bad boys on the field, and just look at your opponent and go, "What are you going to do about it?" All right. It all depends on how you open up with the deck. All right. Now that being said, though, this is the big bad bone for what this deck wants to. Do. Remember, I had a comment a couple weeks back uh, from a duelist that was like, "No, Virtual World's not a VFD Turbo deck." Yes, it is. I'm, I'm sorry to tell you that. All right, I get that you play casually in, in a basement somewhere and you don't like to make True King of All Calamities, that's fine. All right, enjoy playing casually. Let those of us that want to play super hyper competitive with this deck that understand the value of True King of All Calamities for the win condition, we will do that. Now, off of that sub note here, there is a really cheese interaction with this, actually, which ties into the most powerful card out of this weekend which is actually the Virtual World Gate. Oh, man. Choo-choo? I'm, I'm just going to call it Choo-choo. All right, so Choo-choo here. You can target one face-up monster, or target one face-up card on the field. Shuffle two of your banished Virtual World cards with different names from each other into the deck. Then destroy that card. All right. That's, that's the main thing you need to know here. So what happens when, during the opponent's turn, I set up the VFD, and then I do this, to pop the VFD so the VFD will resolve. Oh, well, unless you have the, the droplet to discard the trap card for this, and you 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 know you activate the droplet, I'm going to chain the choo-choo here, and we're going to blow up our VFD, and we're going to watch that thing resolve. All right? It's actually really cool that we have an interaction to cheese the opponent to such BS extremes. Basically just being able to go, nope, nope, I'm going to pop my VFD. Unless you have some super crazy negate destroy out there, because Choo Choo here exists, you're going to get denied a lot of the time now. So, good news. Um, this card's amazing. Bonkers. Oh, and by the way, uh, you can banish this card from your graveyard to target a virtual world monster you control. Increase or decrease its level rank by three till the end of the turn. Hey, by the way. Uh, this also accelerates our synchro plays and the ability to make the true king of all calamities in our deck. Yay! We did it! Best card out of the weekend. What do you guys think about all of this? Please, leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. 
I'll see you sweet faces on the flip side. Peace out, guys. Thank you, patrons, for making the ride never truly end without you guys' support. Well, I would probably be doing Truffle Shuffle videos for a living. Guys, please check out Vancall 40 for all of your Card Fight Vanguard content brought to you by Mcall 40 And if you are looking to pick up singles, check out mcallgames.com for your trading card game needs. Thanks for watching, everybody.